Uh, for those who are hermits, I'm not one, but I, I've gone into them and I understand them. They say, as above, so below. You see, as above, so below simply means the commander-in-chief has to set standards and allow it to trickle down to the bottom. If you put those standards before any security chieftain, it's up to him to go and ensure everybody aligns, or you just change him and put the one that will ensure everybody aligns. I don't care, as commander-in-chief, how you run your ministry. You can go and shake hands with them. Just give me results. If you don't, I'll remove you. Critics can talk about quota system. It's our village turn to produce ministers. I accept that fully. If Chamberlain's village has to produce a minister, with all due respect to your village, and they give me Chamberlain, if he doesn't meet his brief, I will fire him and ask the elders to give me the next but available the question, Does the commander-in-chief understand the brief or the end result that is desired? Exactly. Your end result that is desired is just about your line of sight. Where do you want to go? Oh, I want to do X, Y, Z. Minister Neota, Minister Chamberlain, how do you intend to drive this for me? If you have what it takes, come on board. If you don't have, a, I mean, if you don't have it, have a nice day. And if it's because your village has to produce that minister, fine. That's I, I ask that question because yes. there are those who are concerned about the role of politics in the pursuit of security. The role of politics in the pursuit of politic, uh, sorry, security can be itemized. What does this party stand for? What do we want to make our pivotal statement security-wise? And from there, we glean our line of sight and trajectory for policy making and whatever we have to do. If you bring in somebody from your village and he's not doing well, we fire him and ask your elders to bring the next available son or because daughter. Because they have to understand that at the end of the day... It's about results. It's about, about the results. results. Before we go through Chamberlain's village, I'm sure there will be one son or daughter somewhere who um, will measure up. Or more. So we don't end up with dead weights. When I say dead weights, we are having a lot of cluelessness, official cluelessness here, and it is showing. The third thing I want to suggest is today... 2019, sorry, 2018 Nigeria, I hear petroleum sector, health sector, education sector. I don't think we have a security sector. We don't. We don't have a security sector. It's just there and it's follow. It's follow. We have to sectorize security so that there is going to be what you call public-private partnership. It will be taken more seriously. The government cannot have security entirely on its plate. It will never go off the ground. They need the buying of the people. They need the buying of the people. They need investments from the people. What must we do to be safe? We need to take security a lot more seriously. It is not government business alone. And um, for the practitioners, we need to compartmentalize security. What we have done is just general security, and we can't hold a grip. When I say compartmentalize, what am I talking about? Um, airport security is a specialty. That's aviation. Um, marine security, hospitality, education. What if, 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 if you have a specialist manning security in schools? He or she comes with a different experience, different feed to the, the, the um, security agencies that will process. And the other one who is in hospitality is coming with different feed. But when we generalize security, it is the same police that um, protect politicians and VIPs that go to investigate or look at schools. He's coming out empty because he has gone there empty. He is a general law enforcement uh, personnel. He cannot look into the details and the needs and specialties and peculiarities of um, um, our well-being. So there is the need to sectionalize and compartmentalize security. And then um, a central management body that can process information from all these feeds gets a bit more professional without political and ethnic considerations. These are some of the challenges we're having, and if we look into them, we'll come out better. Well, as I said earlier, 
we need to raise the bar. We need to begin to call this thing a sector, sectorized security. The last time I checked, we have over 80 genres of security, from aviation security, forensic security, critical infrastructure, fire safety. There are so many. No government can sit on it alone. Our government is largely insecure. That's just the problem. They are just insecure. If we can sectorize security, we have enough qualified, profiled stakeholders who will attract the necessary funds needed to take this security up from a time when 100 people can just be stolen at will to better times. That's what we need. So there you go. That's uh, leaving us with more questions than answers. The answers that are being given by those who are saddled with that responsibility. Well, gentlemen, we'll have uh, uh, retired Captain Umar Aliyu, uh, now a security consultant, and we also do have Mr. Chigazi Obani, who is a fellow Institute of Security in Nigeria and a security consultant as well. Gentlemen, thank you both for coming on this morning. Thank you very much. You're most That's welcome. the show as well. We thank you all for watching. We'll see you tomorrow. I'm Chamberlain Oso. I'm Neil Taigwe. Have yourself a good day. Thank you. I'm Maokwe Ogun Yusuf. I'm Ajuri Ngalali. Have a wonderful day. The views and opinions expressed by guests on this program are those of the maker and do not necessarily reflect the views, opinions and endorsement of Channels Television.